How are you coping with the success this time round? Are you finding it a lot easier than Wuthering Heights days? Yes and no. I mean, it's easier because it's something I've experienced before. So I don't have the trauma of going into things that are totally unknown. But on the other hand, I think it's just as hard coming out of such an intense working period, which is very private now, i.e. working in the studio on an album, where mm. maybe we're uh, in the studio constantly for a year, say, and then I come out into the whole world of promotion. And it can be um, just a bit scary, I guess, a bit daunting coming from such a private existence to such a public one. Yes, how do you cope with the press? Because I, I know you, you've talked about them in the past and haven't been too uh, happy with the whole situation of, of promotion. I don't, um, I don't really enjoy promoting. It's something that I do for my work. I feel that, obviously, when you spend a lot of time working on something, it's only right that you come out and let people know that the album's there. I don't feel that ever, hopefully, I'm, I'm not promoting myself, but the work. I'm being the saleswoman mm. for the record or the video or whatever it is at the time. Because the press find it very difficult, these items on you, and they, they're trying hard all the time. I mean, there was a rumour that one of the reasons why you've been away from the scene for quite a long time was that you'd risen to 18 stone. Yes. It's ridiculous, isn't it? How do they come up with these things? I think when you don't um, give people anything, they make things up. Uh, I think it's very flattering on this, lots of levels, the fact that people are still concerned about writing about me, the fact that they still remember me and are hanging on to me. It's very flattering. Yeah, has it surprised you that uh, you've had this instant success once again? I mean, were you at all worried that people may have forgotten all about Kate Bush? I think what you worry about is that people don't like what you've worked on hard. I mean, again, I don't feel it's me that people are responding to um, directly. It's myself through the expression of the music and the work. And it's, I can't tell you how rewarding it is for people to have received this so warmly. Now you came away from school with 10 O-levels, so does that mean you were very attentive people? Um, I think I've just found the whole system of school something that didn't really appeal to me. I couldn't really express myself in that whole system. So presumably your, your favourite lesson was music? Um, I did enjoy music and English, but I just, um, I just didn't really enjoy school as I got older. Why was that? It's very hard to say. Um, I just... Uh, it was very restrictive, wasn't it? Yes, I think mm. I did find it restrictive. Right, so you couldn't get away quick enough? No, at that point in my life, that's, I really did want to leave school. Dave Gilmore of Pink Floyd fame gave you your big break. How did that come about? Well, I'd been writing, I suppose, since I was about 13, seriously. And um, it was my family and my brother, John, who felt that it would be a good idea to see if we could get some of my songs published. And through a friend of the family, we made a contact with Dave Gilmore, who at that time was uh, scouting for talent to perhaps produce or uh, encourage. And um, he came down and heard some songs and I think was impressed and basically eventually put up the money for me to go into the studio and make three tracks properly produced and through those tracks I got the recording contract. Right. Now you mentioned your family. Did you, have you always had a lot of support from them from a very early age? Yes. They always encouraged the music? Yes, I think so. Because your dad taught you piano, didn't he? He didn't teach me piano, but he was definitely the encouraging force when I, I was writing at that time. Um, whenever I'd written this song, I'd always go and ask him to come and listen to it. And uh, he was brilliant, totally encouraging, and in the right way in that he wasn't pushing me into it, um, which I think, especially for children, is the wrong thing to do because they rebel against that automatically. Something which you did at school at times. I don't know if I was rebellious, but there were certainly things I didn't enjoy being taught. Who was the Katie Bush band? It was a three-piece that consisted of Del Palmer on bass, Brian no. Bath on guitar, and uh, Vic Smith, who was the drummer. And where did you tour? Around London? Yes, we did uh, clubs and pubs in the London area, but this only was three months, no longer than that. So how did you feel about doing that at the time? Because obviously it was the first time you'd actually played an audience. I really enjoyed it and um, it was just the experience I wanted at that point. I was looking for things that would take me further into where I wanted to go, which was the music business and I'd been training as a dancer and this felt like the perfect stage really to um, go into a live situation. Looking back on your debut album, The Kick Inside, 
how do you listen? Do you, do you often listen to it now? Do you still put it on the turntable at home? No, I haven't heard it for years. Why is that? Um, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you look upon that album now? Is it a sort of ex very experimental? I think um, it was probably the least experimental of all the albums. I'd written, say, 200 songs, from which we choose, chose the 13 songs that went on there. And um, it was recorded very quickly. There was very little experimentation. It was something that had a lot of uh, forethought gone into it. And of course, you had the big number one single, Wuthering Heights. To people who aren't devout fans of Kate Bush, you mention your name and they immediately say, oh, Wuthering Heights. Even nowadays, does that bother you at all? No, I don't think it would be right of me to be rude to a song that has done so much for me. How, how did you feel though when it went straight to number one? You must have been very taken aback. Yes, very surprised. And it was sort of onwards from there, I suppose. I mean, it must have encouraged you, to, obviously, to do a lot more. And uh, Did you immediately set to work on the next album? It was very difficult, that whole stage, because being so new to the whole business and straight in with such a successful song, it meant really the next year of my life was nothing but promotion. And I think it was quite early on during that time that I decided that promotion was something that had to come secondary to the music or I was going to spend my whole life promoting and never ever making another album. So um, it was a very busy period for me then. What are your main songwriting influences? Obviously quite a difficult one because you must have many. Mm, yes, I mean that is a very difficult question. Subject matter is... Uh, it stems from people, either through their expressions in films that people tell you about, things you witness. Musically, I think that's a much more obscure area. And in a way, it's the music that often will suggest the subject matter. So the music is quite often the thing that sparks it all off. And that comes from the air, really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever feel that you may have missed out on other aspects of life that other teenagers may have enjoyed because of your rather isolated life. You spent a lot of time in the recording studio promoting the next album. Did you miss out on a varied social life, for instance? In many ways, it, it made me meet more people in the way I wanted to, more than would ever have been possible if I hadn't gone into the business. I mean, it's isolated in that you meet certain types of people all the time but it's continually challenging and uh, I think probably I have met more people and had much more experience through what I'm doing now than if I hadn't. Um, there are no regrets. <laughs> and you've never felt you were pushing to adult life too quickly? No, I think um, that's something that happens to kids now uh, much sooner than it did for me. And I think it's something that is generally happening sooner all the time. Kids just grow up quicker now. You never had any worries about getting a job, did you? Um, yes, I did. I think when you leave school and you don't know what you're going to do, um, I was very much throwing myself to fate. Um, if it hadn't have worked, I would have been in a very difficult situation. Um, I just worked very hard and hoped that I'd be able to make something of it, and I was very lucky. Did you ever consider an alternative career? I considered it, but it was never anything serious, um, and that's why I felt I had to leave school and just go for it, because if I didn't make an attempt to throw myself into that lifestyle. I didn't feel it was something that was going to come to me. It was something you had to go out and get. Was that partly influenced by your upbringing from your parents? I don't know what it was influenced by. I think it was the very strong desire in me that had started when I first started working at the piano, um, that this was what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go to university. I didn't want to be in a job where I couldn't be creative. But how did other people react to that? They must have been a bit taken aback. You mean my family? Yeah, your family in particular. Yes, I think obviously my parents were very concerned. Um, I was leaving school, going into something that was completely insecure. And uh, I think really they, they had a tremendous amount of faith in me, in that they wanted me to be happy. And they understood that I wasn't just um, spending my time doing nothing. I was very seriously working on a career that could be insecure, but they had a great deal of faith in me. Looking back, do you have a, a favourite album? I think um, the last album you do is quite often your favourite one, because uh, that's the one you put to me. But um, I think the fourth album held some very precious moments for me, so I'd say that one for now. <laughs> the Dreaming? Yeah. 
A lot of people would have said that album was rather abstract and, and possibly a bit obscure, and it didn't sell in the quantities that the others had done. Did that influence you on your new album? Very difficult to say. I, I don't know what influences you between one and the other except your life, really. You, you change with the environment, and my environment did change between the last album and this one. I moved out of the city and into the country, and I think those two energies are very apparent on both albums. The fourth album is very much an oppressed city atmosphere album, and this one that's just released is very much a freer elemental album. Did you feel a real need to get out into the country then? I was getting fed up with being in London, yeah. I don't know about a real need, but um, I think it's a very good thing for me. I'm glad I did. It certainly helped me relax as a person. And did it drain your creative energies then, being in the town? No, I don't think you could say it drains your creative energies, because if anything, um, and I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me, the sense of oppression and energy that you can get from cities can be very, very productive to writing songs. But um, I found I was getting too many distractions that were stopping me having the time to concentrate on my writing. So rather than it being productive, it was getting in the way. Uh, do you now commune with nature? <laughs> I don't know about commune with nature, but uh, certainly when I look out my window and there's trees and fields, I feel a lot happier than the concrete blocks out there. When you see the trees and the fields, do you see a song as well? Um, no, no, I think um, it's, not, it's not quite as basic as that. But there's no doubt that when you're writing and you look out the window and there is that force out there, that it does affect you very differently from if it, if it was a city or, or by the sea. It, it, definitely your environments do affect you much more than we think. And of course your working environments too. You've just uh, designed and built your own studio. How are you finding that, working in your own studio? It's superb. There really couldn't have been better decisions made in this time between the last album and this, where I've moved and we've moved the studio to where we are. Um, there are so many areas where it's helped. Again, I feel much more relaxed. I'm much freer to work in an uninhibited way. Um, I do get quite nervous if you've got people you don't know coming in, listening. Uh, in the London studio, people are always coming in, borrowing pieces of equipment. The phone's always ringing, and it's costing you a phenomenal amount of money every hour. So you do feel guilty if you experiment, because you feel you're just throwing money away. At home, um, obviously, there aren't those pressures at all.